Hey there everyone and welcome to this week's video. So for this week's video, I thought it would be a blast to talk a bit more about our anemone and clownfish. The reason for this is because our clownfish recently, like over this week, decided to finally, not bond, but host, oh, host yeah. with our host. anemone. And I love this clip because the little shrimpy for some reason also decided to walk onto the anemone down to the rock. Very cute. He loves cleaning it. I just had to add that in, but. A fun fact, along with how clownfish can host with anemones, is actually that they can host with pretty much anything in the tank. I recently found out that can be the wave maker, a heater in the tank, it could be a rock, it could be a corner. They're very interesting little fish clownfish. This is kind of the second time we've had clownfish. The first time was a horrible experience, though. They can be a lot more uh, aggressive than you think yeah, these cute not little exactly fish. Yeah, they're peaceful fish that everybody thinks they are. Yeah. Our first, our first pair of clownfish that we had. Um, so clownfish start out as male. Uh, that's just how they begin. And then um, depending on the amount of clownfish you have and depending on the need for the group, the school of clownfish, um, you can... Some of them uh, will turn into female clownfish, and so they become much larger than the males. And that's exactly what happened with our two clownfish. One of them became the female and kind of the leader. And one, like, they were fine. Like, it was a good sized tank. It was a good size, you know, good decorations and everything. They had an, an, an anemone at that time themselves, but the female decided to just turn super aggressive. And one day we went to see the tank and the female had ripped off all the fins of this poor male and uh, he slowly died after that. We were trying different things to help him to maybe see if we can help heal him or something. But it was kind of a, uh, it was a, it was a meaningless effort because he was pretty badly beaten up, unfortunately. So yeah, they're, they're not as gentle as you might think as, Finding Nemo kind of leads you to believe. <laughs> it's pretty funny because I was just going in to do my flute practice. You were going in to do some games on the computer. And we just, we see this and witnessing this awful scene of the female clownfish randomly just attacking her boyfriend. So it was, it was, it was pretty it was funny and traumatic. But yeah, that's a funny little thing about these fishes. They can host with anything in the tank. Anemones are just a favorite. They can also host with coral, which keep in mind can be detrimental to many coral species, actually. So many people like trying to get an anemone first, so yeah, the you, clownfish won't do you that. You just want to be careful of what's in your tank Yeah, all well, the clownfish and kind of design it appropriately. So they're very interesting, very interesting little fishies. So from that point, we'll go into uh, facts about the anemone, and we'll just kind of talk about uh, some interesting points about them and our thoughts about it. So there's a really cool list that I found online on a website called dresseldivers.com, and they talk about the sea anemone and 30 sea anemone facts that you need to know. And we're not going to go over all of it in detail, but they do point out some pretty cool things. Kind of the the eight um, big things that you want to cover with the sea anemone is, number one, what are anemone? Number two, anemone species, because there's actually quite a few different types of species. There's a lot, actually. And oh, 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 mm -hmm. sorry. I just wanted to point out in this clip, uh, it's actually what our anemone does at nighttime. It balls up and I presume it's like a type of defense thing it yeah, does and then this is this in the behavior. Yeah, yeah where it fully curls up into a ball and then this is the following morning uh just a time lapse of it opening up so when it gets light I guess which would mimic sunlight it opens up its little tentacles it and stuff kind of come around yeah and it's actually very interesting we'll, we'll go back to the list of facts yeah. in a second but the anemones are very um, flexible, very yeah. manipulatable. And um, so basically, like, they have their tentacle-type things. They have their 
mouths in the center and then at the very bottom they have what's called their foot yes. and so like that's kind of the main components that you'll see in a in a anemone that um you know you might come across but the interesting thing is all of these components can drastically change in size and structure and look um depending on what the anemone is trying to do so whether it's trying to swim or move or yes. close its close itself for the night or eat um depending on what it's trying to do you'll see it moving in all kinds of various ways very squishy it shouldn't have been a jellyfish that dory was squishing it should have been an anemone exactly. but she would have gotten stung so i guess that wouldn't have worked only clownfish uh, are okay with their mucus membrane thing <laughs> but anyway on to these facts so coming back to the list of the facts so I don't think, I don't know if I said number three, but number three is sea anemone anatomy facts. So we could talk more about their flexibility and such. Um, number four would be uh, their diet. Um, number five, predators of the anemone. Number six, anemone habitat, because just like any animal, like they require a certain level of salinity and certain temperatures and stuff like that. Uh, number seven would be how long do anemones live, which is very interesting. And number eight, the reproduction of the sea anemone, which is, in my opinion, one of the coolest things because they don't reproduce in the same way that any other creature you would think of does. So we don't have terribly too much time in this video, but we'll just touch upon some of the, the cooler um, bits of the facts. So what are sea anemone? Um, so a lot of people look at sea anemone and wonder whether they're a plant or if they're an animal. And the the answer is that sea anemones are actually invertebrate. So even they look like plants, um, they're not actually. They're kind of their own thing, which is what makes them very alien. So even though these cool creatures, they don't have skeletons or brains like your traditional animal would, um, they're actually tremendous predators. Um, that being said, we'll lead into number two. Which is anemone species. So this is something that I recently found out and I thought was just so cool, is there's actually around 1,200 species of different sea anemones around the world. And uh, there's all kinds. They can have bubbles. They can have long tentacles. They can even look like coral. It's pretty amazing in different colors. And different clownfish actually have different preferred types of anemones that they will go to. So that's why sometimes people have trouble hosting them in the aquarium is they might prefer a bubble tip or they might prefer a different kind. We have a bubble tip anemone. Just fun little thing to throw in there. It's kind of one of the more yeah. common common kinds as well. Easy to care for. <laughs> That's why I wanted for. it. But they do all have kind of their own preferences, which is super cool. Yeah, which I thought was pretty awesome. Alrighty, let's go into a couple things about their anatomy. So, uh, anatomy. And their anatomy. So number three, their anatomy. Um, anemones can, in fact, move. Um, like we talked about before, one of their components is actually their feet. And um, while their feet seem to be like they they stick themselves to the position they want to be in but that doesn't mean they're stuck they can actually still move even actually in their larval stage um, they actually swim they can still swim in their older stages as well but they have a lot more movement than you think you do want to be careful though if you're trying to get your anemone to move when they move on their own it's fine but if their foot rips it they will die unfortunately yeah. so, you, so you don't want to force the anemone off of any place that they're in like a rock <laughs> like, like a rock there are techniques to kind of get them to move but the last thing you want to do is actually force them Biggest thing I've seen is when we bought this anemone is you can take a guitar pick and kind of try to tickle their foot. They actually Any cannot surface, exactly. Yeah. They yeah. cannot sting people, which is something I recently found out because you always hear, "Oh, they sting fish," but you can actually squish them and stuff. It's it's pretty funny. It's pretty cute. Yeah. And on to number four. This is kind of a quick one. Uh, their diet is made up of different. Um, Zooplankton. Like zooplankton and mussels and clams. Smaller fish. Shrimp. Primarily sunlight too, actually. So though yeah. So so they 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 eat a lot of meat and stuff, but we discovered recently by talking to um one of the uh experts that 
gave us this a sea anemone was that yeah they they actually also use like light sunlight as in as if like plants do like so they photosynthesize in a way um which also helps them to live and it makes it confusing if they're a plant or an animal but they are ultimately that invertebrate and that being said um we'll go on to number five they're predators so what eats them they eat stuff but what eats them too so incredibly um they don't really appear to have many predators just because of how formidable their defense system is, um, how they can uh, move around and uh, shrink really small. Um, they actually they can squeeze through a lot of incredible places. The first anemone that we had um, moved around in through the live rock and all that kind of stuff. So they're actually really good at protecting themselves. But the biggest thing that does kill these things are actually nudibranchs. So they're cute little sea slugs. They're also amazing. If I could keep them, I would, but they don't live in aquarium super well. But a little sea slug, and they are venomous. So if you can imagine, that's actually where they get a lot of their venom from, these sea slugs, is actually through eating other animals. And that's their biggest enemy is the little slugs. Yeah, <laughs> of all things to die die from so going on to number six the anemone habitat um and anemones can actually live in all sorts of marine conditions um anything from like tropical waters to icy waters um they can be found at uh, many different depths within the ocean as well um so they're very uh, robust so that being said, no matter where it chooses to live, the anemone always serves as a sort of home to either clownfish, and they can also be a home to shrimp uh, as well. They very much thrive in these sim uh, symbiotic, is that what they're called? Yeah, symbiotic. symbiotic relationships. So having something like a shrimp live with the sea anemone can actually help it um, fight off different predators. Um, or even undigested foods. And along with uh, shrimp, actually, I've already seen sashimi, the clownfish, try to feed uh, the anemone as well as help to clean it. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's yeah, pretty, like they, gr cool. they help to groom it, which is very interesting. And on the note of symbiotic relationships between anemone, Apparently, there is a type of algae that also has a symbiotic relationship with them. Um, so, like we established, anemones are not animals, um, but they do use uh, algae to their benefit, which uh, allows them to take in nutrients. I referenced photosynthesizing earlier. They don't actually photosynthesize because they're not plants. But um, this algae called it's called Zooxanthella. We'll put the the name up here. I've kind of butchered it, um, but it actually lives inside the anemones, and that's what helps them use sunlight to their advantage. So moving on to number seven, uh, how long do anemones live? And according to scientists, anemones' lifespans can actually exceed a hundred years. So with more than a century of living, that's pretty incredible. And I think it has to do with because it, they have such good defense mechanisms, they don't really have a ton of predators. So they're able to just live for a long time. And not to mention kind of how, how hardy they are, which really provides that. Um, which will lead us into number eight, which is the reproduction of the sea anemone. Now, much like what a sea anemone is, which is neither plant nor animal, invertebrate, um, invertebrate their, their reproduction way is, is very alien as well. So they actually um, split themselves uh, into two different versions of themselves. Um, so sometimes the split can be uh, forced by some people who keep them. I don't really like the idea of doing that, but if you do take care of your sea anemone well enough, it will actually eventually split itself into other sea anemones and then continue to grow 
from there. So not only do they live a long time, but they can split multiple times, creating more sea anemones um, as they kind of age. And the funny thing is, though, when, like, anemones split, like, especially when an aquarium is healthy, uh, it can actually become a problem with them splitting because the anemone will just keep, like, splitting and splitting itself. Yeah, Yeah. and uh, the problem with that isn't so much that you'll have lots of anemones, it's that they can actually go into spots in the tank that many people don't like. Or they shouldn't. Yeah, or that they shouldn't, which is kind of funny. You can have and overrun an enemy problem. And that being said, um, even more alien, uh, that's not their only way to reproduce. They actually do, uh, much like the traditional way of reproduction, uh, fertilize a type of egg uh, that the female uh, releases. And even more alien yet, just like the clownfish that they host, they can actually change their genders depending on the situation as well. So they have a phenomenal way of sticking around and being impossible to kill and just being being super cool uh, little creatures um, that you can keep in your own aquarium. And when they hatch, they actually have a larva stage. So these guys are just... A whole other thing. It's kind of like the octopus. Like, I don't know, just the way certain animals evolve and where they come from. And it's just, I don't know, it's it's awesome. They're very cool creatures. And I'm glad that we have one. And sashimi seems to approve. Same with our cleaner trim. So I'm really happy to have our little bubble tip anemone. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed learning some stuff about the anemone. Uh, a lot of this stuff we didn't know until learning about it. And hey, if we're wrong on some things, you know, let us know in the comments. If if you have different thoughts and opinions or you have more facts to share, let us know. Um, it's really cool to hear what you guys have to say feedback-wise. And I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Um, about the anemone. I know I've learned a lot just through having this anemone since my birthday. It's like, oh wow, I really didn't know much about these guys, but it's it's, it's very cool the relationship that all these marine animals have with each other. I think that's my favorite part about having a saltwater tank and just like, yeah. Having a solar tank is just yeah, just the symbiotic relationship they all have with one another. It's amazing to see them person. Yeah. Alrighty, gang. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.